What is up, guys? Okay, um, Tuesday, holiday weekend's over, and um, something I've been seeing a little bit about on some of the Facebook groups, especially some of the, the newer sort of EMT sort of Facebook groups, is people asking questions and struggling a little bit with getting uh, blood pressures, especially in the back of uh, moving ambulances, right? So what I want to do today is kind of just give you a few tips and some ideas when you're taking blood pressures in the back of the ambulance um, to maybe help you out a little bit. Of course, uh, you know, the first thing, guys, listen, you're new in EMS and you're buying lots of bells and whistles and, and you know, fancy trauma shears and stuff like that. But when it comes to blood pressures, lung sounds, things like that, get yourself a good stethoscope. Now, I've used the Littman. For the longest time, this one I think cost me about 85 bucks back in the day, okay, I mean, a few years ago. But I had used the cheaper ones, and you'll talk to people, and people will say, Oh, the cheap ones work just great, and that's fine if it works for you, that is perfect, okay. But all in all, for me, get a good quality stethoscope, don't buy one of these ones that are mass made. And you end up, you know, not really using it so much because it just doesn't seem to work and you kind of lose faith in your equipment. Have faith in your equipment. So get yourself a good one. These, Like I said, Libbins are pretty good. Any of the models are, are decent um, and uh, pretty easy to clean, okay? And most of them come with nice changeable ear tips and what's comfortable for you. Now, when it comes to getting the actual blood pressure, right? A lot of times it's, it's a noise issue in the back of the ambulance. Turn off the air conditioner, turn down the radio, minimize noise so you can hear what the blood pressure is going to be. All right. Um, another thing to do is try to isolate when you, you're holding a patient's arm, okay, and you have it underneath you. Don't let it hit the railing, the, 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 the stretcher, um, mattress, the patient. Okay, kind of elevate a little bit so you can go ahead and do that. You can even rest it on your leg if you want a little bit. But if you do that, kind of uh, raise your legs a little bit while you're doing it. It's, it's a little bit of a balancing act. I've done it. But when you kind of raise your legs a little bit and you're taking the blood pressure, you're minimizing the vibration as well going through you when you're taking the blood pressure. So go ahead and do that. You, you'll find a comfortable way to do that, all right, when, you, when you're doing that type of stuff. Um, like I said, don't let the patient's arm touch anything. Try to remove it and, and limit as much as you can what is touching on the patient themselves. All right. Now, another thing is, and this is something that I've heard uh, done as well, and that is turn the blood pressure cuff upside down. You know, you, when you take the blood pressure, you have all those tubes coming down, right? They're going to be bouncing into each other, right? And it's going to sound like the blood pressure. So, you can actually turn the blood pressure cuff upside down so the, 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 the hoses and the tubes aren't hitting each other. As long as you have the markings where the artery is supposed to be that's marked on the blood pressure cuff lined up where it's supposed to be, it's not going to make a difference in the accuracy of the blood pressure. All right. Now, another thing is, is and when it's a noisy environment, is to use the bell of your stethoscope, not the diaphragm. So... When you do that, the, the bell is more for those low frequency sounds, and you can maybe hear it uh, much better. So try to go ahead and do that. And the bell, now I don't have a bell on this one. This is a cardiology uh, set scope, but of course I got this at the EMS for many, many years. I kind of had with my techniques down on getting a blood pressure in the ambulance. So a bell, I took a picture of it on my cell phone. Let me show it to you so that you guys can see what I'm talking about here. But the bell is one is this part right here, okay? The more conclave sort of part, the smaller part, all right? That's the bell. And so when you're in the back of the moving ambulance, go ahead and try to go ahead and use that part of your stethoscope so that you can go ahead and get a better, like I said, low frequency sounds, you can hear the bell much better. You do a pediatric, you do a pediatric patient as well, okay? Um, you know, again, guys, you know, you might be new to this. This is, uh, some of this stuff is overwhelming and, and it's stressful, right? Nobody wants to, you're, uh, we're, you're with a preceptor or with a, a you know, a, a, a field evaluator, whatever. 
you don't want to be blurting out 120 over 80 or 110 over 80. You want to go ahead and give an accurate blood pressure. And a little hint, guys, when you're taking the blood pressure and you're looking at the sphygmometer and you're reading the numbers, it's not going to be an odd number. They're all even numbers. All right. Now, when you use automatic cuffs, they will give you odd numbers. All right. But that's an automatic cuff. When you're new to EMS and you're taking, and even when you're not new to EMS, actually, when you take a blood pressure for your, from your patient, you should be taking, you know, some manual blood pressures before you start relying on the machine. So you take some man, one or two manuals, then hook them up to the automatic machine. This way, you can kind of get in trend on what the blood pressure readings are for that patient. But so your first one, even your second one should be manual, right? So again, they're not going to be odd numbers. So keep that in mind. You were the preceptor. Don't blurt out 130, you know, 5 over 75. It's, that's not going to be, you know, really something that's going to be an accurate thing. Um, so just keep in mind that some, just some quick tips, guys. They're not, you know, a hard, you know, hard and you know, set in stone, but some things that you can think about, some tips and tools you can use when you're taking blood pressure. Listen, I know when you're new, there's so much stuff to, to, you know, to know, so much stuff to deal with. So this is just one of them. Now, another thing that I want to go ahead and just mention, kind of end this off, guys, is when you're reading the blood pressure and you get the diastolic reading, right? Most people will go ahead and mark that, uh, for instance, 120 over 80. They'll mark the 80 at a point where they can no longer hear that thump, right? When they hear that thump, it starts fading away, okay? When they can no, more, no longer hear the thump with their stethoscope, whether it's in a moving ambulance or just sitting in somebody's house, that's when they mark the diastolic BP. But some you will find that some patients, that thump will be going on all the way down to zero. So is it 120 over zero? No. More accurately, guys, the diastolic blood pressure is actually the number where the volume, the, the, the volume of the thump drops dramatically, okay? That's going to be more accurate where your diastolic BP is going to be. Well, a lot of times it'll just end, right? But sometimes you'll hear it kind of fading off. You don't want to wait till you go. It's not a hearing test. You know, wait till the very drop, right? A lot of times that dramatic drop off is about five to ten, uh, you know, millimeters of mer uh, millimeters of mercury higher than the actual when it disappears altogether. Okay, so that number, like I said, if you start hearing it and it drops, and, it, and you hear that that volume, you know, drastically drop um, at eighty, and it's kind of tinkering off, that means that it's probably, and, and you get down to like, oh my God, it's like sixty-eight, so it's one twenty over sixty-eight. No, it's probably one twenty over seventy, one twenty over you know eighty-six, because it's going to probably be again higher. 5 to 10 higher than what you actually hear it disappearing altogether. So just some things to think about, guys. Um, just some, uh, some quick tips here. I hope they really help you out. If you're new to EMS and you're new to you're a new EMT and you're taking your exam, you have all the stuff going on, you want some tips, want some more help, go check out my EMS exam success course. It's at emsseo.com, full search formula. There's a bunch of videos there and a way that you can go ahead and get set up as a new provider to go ahead and create sort of your own plan, your own process for studying, for taking exams, all right, and help you succeed. And of course, you get live training, live coaching with me that'll go ahead and I can kind of get you on track, figure out where you're missing, where you can focus, where you can get better at your efforts and passing the exams and studying and doing good in school, all right? So interested in that go check that out i'd love to see you to actually um today's tuesday so thursday is the next live coaching session maybe i'll see you there otherwise guys i hope this video helped you help give you some quick tips on reading blood pressures um if you have listen if you're experienced you're watching this video and you think i'm out of my mind i don't know what the hell i'm talking about do me a favor leave some comments in the notes below i'd love to see how you deal with taking blood pressures in noisy environments as well listen i don't know everything right if you think you know everything in ems you're wrong so if you have a better way of doing it or something that maybe i missed or some a tweak on something i talked about 
post it in the comments below. I'd love to see it. And I think other EMS professionals and new people in EMS that kind of struggle with this stuff is gonna are gonna want to know as well. All right, so end it there, guys. Thanks for joining me. I really appreciate it. Have a great uh, rest of the week. I'm sure I will be on another live probably tomorrow or the next day. Um, uh, Charles, I see you in the chat there. Thanks a lot, man, for making a quick comment. All right, guys, that's it. I am Jim Hoffman from emsseo.com. Stay safe.